Good evening and thanks for joining us. I'm Jamison Euler. And I'm Wendy Ryan. Let's get right out to Dennis Phillips, who's monitoring Elsa for us as we speak. Den? Yeah, Wendy, I think the first thing we want to note is earlier on this afternoon when we saw hurricane warnings issued for the area, a lot of alerts showed up on phones. A lot of folks started freaking out with good reason. I mean, those kind of get your attention. Well, that's the point. Hurricane Center recon flying through the storm and found a small area of winds at about 70 miles an hour. The entire area is not showing wind like that, nor do we expect it will. But because doing their job, letting people know there's a chance in this red area, there could be some winds up to around hurricane force. They figure, you know what, we're going to pull the trigger and issue a hurricane warning. That would only be along the coastal areas. Inland areas, still tropical storm warnings. We're going to be on all night long, so you'll have plenty of time to kind of digest where this is going and the timing. But the bottom line is there's just no way around this. I don't care what the track is. And at this point, the track is honestly meaningless. This big blob is coming this way and there's no way around it. We will see strong winds along the coast 50 to 60 gusting even higher than that inland area is probably 35 to 40. we will have power outages not necessarily widespread but closer to the coast they will be more so expect that and of course the timing is going to be at night which is really the worst case scenario but this is really a one-two punch i've been using this description for a while because most of the wind and the rain happens before we have to worry about the surge in terms of this track, there it is. It's not going to stray. The only question we have is, will this go up another 5 or 10 miles an hour and change this to a hurricane from a tropical storm? At the end of the day, it's not going to change the impact for our area. It's just more of the classification. So where and when do we expect the heaviest winds? They start around our southern county, Sarasota, Manatee, over the next few hours and slowly work their way northward. Do want to show this, though. There's some lightning on the west side of this thing. It's still disorganized, a lot of shear, and that's good news for us because it, it keeps it from developing too terribly quickly. But when you see lightning, that's usually a sign it's trying to get better organized. Elsa is a fighter, and she's fighting that shear. But at the end of the day, we still believe most of that heaviest weather will be right along the coast or just to the west of our coastline. After the wind and the rain come through, it's the surge. And here's what's really, really difficult to understand is in spite of all the rain that we have and the flood advisories that we will see, it's a quick moving system. So while we will see some flooding because we've had so much rain of late, the biggest issue is not so much the flooding, it is the surge coming in. So when does that happen? It happens after most of the wind and the rain have left. Here's why. Center of the storm is down here, not near the actual heaviest rain and the heaviest wind. So if the center is here, north, where all the nasty stuff is going on and we're all going to see it, the winds are blowing offshore. You don't get surged with an offshore wind. You get surged with an onshore wind. So that means by about midnight to 2 a.m., there's your center, north of it offshore, south of it onshore. The surge builds at the mouth of Tampa Bay through Manatee and Sarasota County between 10 o'clock and midnight. From midnight to 2, the center continues to go very close to the coastline. Behind it, the winds taper off, but the surge picks up. So between 2 and 4 a.m., a very high likelihood of surge issues across our coastal area from Pinellas and Hillsborough, and then the surge moves through Pasco, Hernando, and Citrus County right on up until sunrise.